Defensible space, creating a homeowner is, is allowing the fire department to be able to get their equipment in and protect the home during a wildland fire. If you have uh, a bunch of material or landscaping that's right up against the home uh, or debris, firewood, it makes it difficult for the firefighters to be able to get in there and defend that home. Defensible space protects your home as the resident, but it also protects the firefighters that are going to respond to your home to protect your home when the fire front actually arrives. It does, it does two, double duty, protects you and your family and your home, but it also protects the firefighters that are going to come out to defend your home. And that's all we ask is give us a chance. Fire mitigation removes the flammable fuels away from the house so they don't, so the fire doesn't burn right up next to the structure. It allows the home space from the grass and the brush and the trees and the branches that are ignitable and will burn during a wildfire. It gives the home space away from that so it doesn't burn up next to the home and possibly ignite the home during a wildfire. I suggest they start first by looking at their property from the street. That's where the firefighters are gonna look at their property when we first arrive, is we're gonna look at it from the street or the driveway as we're coming up to the home. Zone one is that first zone around the home. That's the zone we want to make sure as much material is moved away that we create a barrier, if you will, between the home or the structures, not just your home, but any garages or other structures that you have that are outlying. Zone two goes about up to around 100 feet away from the home. And what we want in that area is we want our grasses mowed down if possible to six inches or less. We want trees limbed up uh, to 10 feet if possible, or in the case of the smaller trees, uh, no more than a third of the distance of the, of the tree's height, so whichever is less. Zone three then is, extends to the rest of your property, and that is just good cleaning principles, maybe some delimbing, some thinning of the trees uh, to what would be considered a, a normal kind of looking forest as opposed to what we tend to have in our areas anymore because of the, of the fire uh, or lack of fire uh, regime that we've had in the past which allows much more dense forest to come up, and this is what's attributing to a lot of the wildfires that we've seen in the last few decades. Some of the things that you want to also look at is marking where your septic systems are at, uh, and your leach fields. The last thing is, is, is fire to fires and, and units coming in from, um, the, from the city um, may or may not realize that rural areas have septic systems instead of, of uh, sewer systems that are connected to their properties. And therefore, some of those trucks may fall in. Your propane tanks and your gas grills on your back decks, uh, wood furniture on back decks, uh, all those sort of things become fuel for fire if they're in contact with the fire. One of the other things is where your fences or your, your decks touch the ground. Uh, you need to be cautious of the fact that if your fence touches your house, is there a way that you can put rock underneath the fence so the fire can't catch the fence and then spread to the house itself? Uh, those are some of the things that we see frequently that homeowners just don't think about that we go in and take care of pretty quickly. Um, never forget about your roof and rain gutters. That is cleaning the leaves and the pine needles and stuff off your roofs and off of your rain gutters is key. Um, the ground is, is one thing, but when the sparks and stuff starts flying and landing into that, it could cause uh, fires up on top of the roofs. Also look at your ventilation systems um, from your roofs and your attics. Sometimes what happens is, is when there's a lot of he heavy embers and stuff flying, they get in, inside there and then they, we may not know that you've got uh, embers in your attic or down in your crawl space. And then last but not least, if you're looking in a heavily wildland um, interfaced areas, uh, stucco or hardened uh, materials, uh, construction materials will benefit your home to withstand those, those, um, those wildland fires. If you're living in the trees, that is a wildfire prone environment and we have to be prepared for a wildland fire. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I hate to say that, people are tired of hearing that, but we will have wildfires in most areas around the, obviously we've seen that the last few years across the region and the county, and it's going to happen again in our county and we have to be prepared for that. Mitigation is for you, it's also for your neighbors, and it's for your neighborhood. And look at mitigation and risk reduction as a quilt. It's a patchwork. It's this home, and then this home, and then this home, and now we're starting to get some uh, momentum moving toward mitigating an entire subdivision or a block. And then that block becomes easier for us as firefighters 
because we don't have unlimited resources when there is a wildfire and we have to prioritize where we can put crews and if those areas have been mitigated, mitigated it takes less crews to protect those homes in those areas. And so mitigation in the end is a, it's, it's a 365 program. It's for the homeowners, but it comes all the way back around and it benefits the fire department just as much at the end of the day. Well, we do have some grants and funding available to help reduce the cost, contact Extension or U.S. Forest Service, State Forest Service, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, and a Coalition for the Upper South Platte up here. We're all working together to help in this whole event of trying to minimize the damage that happens with this.